Ping Laxon. Thank you. It's All right, any objection? Hearing none, uh, we are now considering the budget of the Department of National Defense. Senator Pampilo Laxon, sponsor, will, uh, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. There are 11 offices or agencies attached uh, to the Department of National Defense. Uh, and we are proposing new appropriations for the uh, department uh, and its attached agencies for fiscal year 2020, the amount of 191,340,253,000 pesos. This is uh, 4% of GDP. Uh, this is percent of GDP. In their key uh, security strategy for 2018, uh, it stated that uh, there should be a minimum of 2% of GDP appropriations for uh, the Department of National Defense. The proposed new appropriations is distributed as follows. For the Office of the Secretary, 625,091,000 pesos. For the General Arsenal, 1,302,801,000 pesos. For the National Defense College of the Philippines, 118,804,000 pesos. For the Office of Civil Defense, 1,236,366,000 pesos. For the Philippine Veterans Affairs Office or PIVAO, 592,454,000 pesos. For the Veterans Memorial Medical Center, 1,754,818,000 pesos. For the Armed Forces of the Philippines, 185,709,919,000 pesos broken down as follows. 92,413,000 92, pesos for the Philippine Army. 26,236,267,000 for the Philippine Air Force, 29,029,943,000 pesos for the Philippine Navy, and 38,030,000,000 uh, 38, for the General Headquarters, AFP, and AFP wide service units. We're also proposing to amend the appropriations language to reflect the Philippine Marine Corps as a key budgeting unit. So right now, while their uh, budget is, sti is still large with the Philippine Navy, uh, it already specifies how much uh, is earmarked for the Philippine Marine Corps. So with that, uh, the sponsor is now ready for interpolations, Mr. President. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, uh, our dear colleagues, all three on the floor who are planning to interpolate, are asking for a few minutes to just read their um, uh, the information and questions that they're preparing for the DND. If it's all right, we suspend for uh, a few minutes, Mr. President. Uh, yes, of course. Um, session is suspended.
Mr. Sessions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, uh, first to uh, interpolate the gentleman from Cavite. It's also a gentleman from Cavite, Mr. President, Mr. Senator Francis Tolentino. May we recognize Senator Francis Tolentino, Mr. President? Senator Francis Tolentino, the gentleman from Cavite, is recognized. Good morning, uh, Mr. President. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair. Alam niyo po, wala sana akong itatanong. I'm here to support the budget of the Na uh, Department of National Defense. Thank you, Your Honor. But uh, <laughs> I was, I was uh, egged on by our majority floor leader to ask some questions. So with, with uh, due respect to my friend, uh, former colleague in the cabinet, Secretary Lorenzana, let me uh, propound some general questions which can be readily answered by the good chair. It was mentioned a while ago that our budget for 2020, if I'm not mistaken, is 4% or 2% of the GDP, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Chair. As per their national security strategy in, uh, of 2018, should be, there should be a minimum of 2% of GDP. But now, as it is, as recommended by the Senate uh, under its committee report, uh, nasa 4% tayo. Really? And the doubling of the, the, the budget, uh, Mr. President, would be equated to the massive uh, capital investments being done right now by the armed forces of the Philippines, uh, especially the Philippine Navy. And this is uh, probably of historic proportions because uh, we have been reading in news reports uh, left and right that several ships are uh, arriving within within this year at first quarter of next year. Am I correct, uh, Mr. President? That is correct, although it is uh, uh, being carried under the unprogrammed appropriations. Yung sa modernization, there's five, five billion actually. But the bulk of the budget of the DND and the attache agencies would go to PS, 63%. Mga nasa 63% yung PS because uh, they have been recruiting uh, personnel to address the need uh, of, of security. And the security requirement, Mr. President, is really uh, relevant considering uh, present conditions, considering uh, perhaps the latest news report uh, emanating from Samar yesterday that we, we yeah. lost three personnel uh, of Six. the Philippine Army in an encounter with uh, some... Yeah. Six uh, Army uh, personnel and wounding of 20 others. Yes, Mr. President. But uh, if, I, if I may glance and quote a, a study done by the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, uh, for 2018, the, the budget of the Philippines for defense was, uh, was just ranked number five uh, in terms of vis-a-vis uh, -vis our ASEAN uh, friendly neighbors, and I, if I may be allowed to quote Mr. President, the defense budget of uh, Singapore for 2018, and this probably is the latest uh, configuration coming from the said institute, is uh, more than uh, $10 billion, uh, if I'm not mistaken, by the number of zeros here, even uh, with my reading glass. Indonesia comes in second with more than $7 billion. Thailand is third, more than six. Vietnam is fourth, and the Philippines is uh, number five, followed by Malen Malaysia, Mr. President. Dito po ba sa ranking na ito sa dumaang dalawang taon, 2019, and with the proposed budget for 2020, tama pa ba ito na pang lima lang po tayo sa uh, ranking, sa pecking order in terms of uh, uh, ba, uh, defense budget sa, at, sa ating mga kasamahan sa Association of Southeast Asian Nation. Palagay ko po, hindi po tama yan. Hindi uh, walang hustisya para sa ating armed forces, para sa ating defense establishment, considering the uh, obtaining situation, particularly sa West Philippine Sea. Uh, meron pa tayong internal conflict dito. Uh, they're still facing uh, the problem of terrorism in uh, in the south or uh, an anywhere else in the in the country so mukhang argabyado po talaga kung number 5 lang tayo sa ASEAN
So, uh, Mr. Chair, wala po tayong datos dito po ngayon sa paano ka lang gastusin para sa 2020 kung magiging pang ilan ang, ang ranking ng ating bansa in, in, in terms of uh, defense uh, expenditures, Mr. President? Kasi po wala naman tayong datos ng ibang bansa na pagkukumperahan natin. So, mahirap sabihin na lalaktaw tayo ng number 4, number 3, or, o bababa tayo number 6. Kailan makuha natin yung datos para naman sa kanilang 2020 budget para natin na uh, ma-determine kung magiging pang ilan tayo dito sa ating pinopropose na 191 billion pesos para sa ating defense establishment. But but the uh, my my good kababayan from Cavite uh, acknowledged a while ago that na, na doble na po ito and and then if if we really have to uh, produce a a graph uh, relative to the previous budgets, ito na po siguro yung pinakamalaking budget na tinanggap ng Department of National Defense ng sandatahang lakas ng Pilipinas uh, simula sa ilang dekada pa ang nakakaraan. Am I correct, Mr. President? Yeah, tama po. Katunayan po, noong nagkaroon tayo ng pagdinig at nandun din po kayo, tinanong natin din yan kay uh, Secretary Lorenzana at ito po yung kanyang isinagot sabi niya, we have to catch up, sir. We should not revise the goal, but we should catch up uh, with our capital asset uh, procurement, or on our capital uh, asset procurement. We're still in the horizon too, Mr. Chair. It's up to the end of 2022. And maybe after that, then we can say we have achieved maybe 80% of our target of being a credible uh, or having a credible defense posture. So, yun po yung uh, hope ng uh, good Secretary of National Defense na sana bago matapos yung uh, 2022, maka, makahabol man lang tayo sa ating mga kapitbahay. And, and we totally agree, Mr. President, that the, there should be a catch-up plan if this uh, Stockholm International Peace Research Institute study is correct uh, relative to defense expenditure. Hindi lang po siguro 4% or 2% ng GDP. Baka kaya pa nating mapataas ng 6%. But if I recall, Mr. President, uh, studies were made, and I'm, I'm not uh, prepared to give out the, the exact figures, that in so far as defense spending, the People's Republic of China has the highest defense uh, uh, outlay Uh, in, uh, relative to the other uh, big powers, even surpassing the United States, Mr. President, and uh, Russia. May we know from the uh, good chair if this is a, a correct uh, conclusion and if we have a figure vis-a-vis uh, -vis the defense spending of the People's Republic of China as against the current uh, proposed outlay for the Department of National Defense. Ganon kaliit po tayo kung ikukumpara sa gastusin ng uh, People's Republic of China. I could not agree more, uh, Mr. Uh, or distinguished colleague, na talagang wala naman tayong basihan para makipag, o oh, i-compare man lang yung ating sarili sa People's Republic of China o kanilang uh, PLA, ano? Uh, talaga napakalayo po. At yan pa yung hinaharap nating problema, lalo na sa usaping West Philippine Sea. So, yung catch-up plan, Uh, I had a private discussion with the Secretary Rensana. Maybe we can now revisit the revised AFP modernization plan para magkaroon tayo ng konting adjustments. Dahil while we passed this, how many years ago? Kailan yung revised yung 104? Ano yung Republic Act? Revised modernization. Anyway, napag-usapan po namin ito at, at uh, pag-aaralan nila kung po pwedeng uh, i- magpasa ulit tayo ng batas para o bisitahin uli yung revised AFP modernization plan. Uh, ta tama po, tama po uh, Mr. President, Mr. President, pero sa People's Republic of China, yung latest figures na hawak-hawak ko, 177.49 billion US dollars ang kanilang budget. Kung pagsamasamahin pa ho itong uh, budget ng buong ASEAN, eh, malaki pa ho itong sa People's Republic of China. Uh, hindi pa siguro tinatalakay dito yung, yung mga nanggagaling doon sa mga, uh, sa mga naval militia nila 
na hindi natin malaman kung ito pa ay gastusing sibilyan, yung mga nanggagaling sa Guanzo, o gastusing uh, pang militar. So, 100, uh, 177. 177. So roughly, parang 50 times kung ang, uh, ang currency exchange rate ng uh, peso sa dollar ay 50 pesos, nasa more or less, nasa 40 times siguro yung kanilang uh, lakas kesa sa ating uh, tanggulang pambansa. So lumalabas po dyan, uh, Mr. President, na talagang prioridad ng People's Republic of China ang, ang gastusing uh, uh, para sa kanilang uh, defense. At uh, if I may quote some items uh, here in my, in my presence, uh, which, would, which is related to the uh, parliamentary discussion we have right now, Mr. Chair, Noon pong, noon pong uh, as early as 2013, June 27 to be exact, Admiral Liu Huaqing, the mastermind of China's modern naval strategy, said in 1982 that they would control the first and second island chains by 2010 and 2020 respectively. And the first island chain would refer to the Kuril Islands to Borneo, and the northern part of the Philippines, taking over the whole Spratly Islands and Taiwan. And the second island chain, if I may quote, would refer to the east of Luzon, which includes the Benham Rice, o Ogasawara Islands and the Vulca Volcano Islands of Japan, to the Mariana Islands and Guam. Medyo na delay po ito kasi malapit na yung 2020. Why am I saying this, Mr. President? I filed two weeks ago a bill that would establish a naval, a, 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 a naval uh, chain, a naval chain that would protect the main archipelago of the Philippines. And, and I'm looking at the, I have a glance at the, the budget of the armed forces of the Philippines and the Department of National Defense. Even if the good secretary acknowledged do, during the committee hearing that the new policy is to have small forward operating bases. Apparently, it is not reflected in the 2020 budget, Mr. President. So, paano po ito, uh, Ms. Ms. Mr. Chair? Uh, sinabi po ng, ng kagalanggalang na kalihim ng uh, DND na ito po ay pulisya na, I, I, if I may, if I may uh, since this has been out, in, in the press uh, several months ago, we have a, an island in Batanes, uh, which is now being uh, uh, manned by our Philippine Marines, a detachment or bigger than that, Mabulis, is, is, that's the correct uh, term. We have a small island in Tawi-Tawi, uh, I forgot the name, which was recently be, be, being... Pangwaldao, uh Yes, Mr. President. Uh, Your Honor. So, uh, ang nak nakita ko po doon sa... Napakaganda po itong strategia, although this should not be in the open, but for, for purposes of uh, uh, budgetary uh, planning, hindi ko po nakita, Mr. Chair, na nakasama doon sa budgetary requirements ng Department of National Defense. Siguro pag nagkaroon ulit ng budget call para sa 2021 kasi hindi na isama ito sa National Expenditure Program although ag agree naman sila do sa mungkahe ninyo na dapat talaga magkaroon ng mga small unit forward uh, base especially do sa sinabi nyo nga do sa may Batanes ang sabi nila muba mubalis mabulis mabulis island at saka sa tawi-tawi yung uh, pang pangwal so uh, probably, pagdating ng uh, Marso sa isang taon at nagkaroon ng budget call, uh, seriously, they will consider uh, asking for uh, the appropriate uh, appropriations or budget uh, to put up the uh, facilities that you are uh, talking about uh, now, Your, Your Honor. Kaya ko po yun nabanggit, Mr. President, Mr. Chair, is that several months ago, two, two naval ships of the People's Republic of China happened to pass by the area and announced and detected after a few days uh, near the Tawi-Tawi uh, island th that is now being uh, manned by, by a Philippine Marines detachment. Kaya ko po sinasabi to Mr. President, 
kung hintayin pa natin yung 2020 budget call, eh baka ma maraming dumaan na naman uli na mga barkong pandigma ang ilang ilang uh, bansa na hindi natin na detect at baka papan ho mamimaintain itong dalawang islands na pinapatakbo na ngayon ng Philippine Navy, ng, ng Philippine Marines, kung wala pong budgetary support ngayong 2020, Mr. President? Well, we'll try to scout for uh, for some uh, amount from other agencies if, and let's see if we can realign whatever necessary appropriations uh, is needed to man those two islands that you uh, just mentioned, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, I, I Maybe think... Maybe you can help me look for some amount uh, to be, uh, you know, uh, taken out from some agencies that would not be needing those uh, appropriations. Mr. President, I think the good chair is more astute, more, uh, more deliberate, and more intricate in finding budgetary sources uh, large in other uh, department, departments that are currently unutilized. Malaki po maitutulong ni Senator Lacson. Pero hindi lamang po yun, uh, Mr. President. I, I have heard from, the, uh, from my sources that uh, the Philippine Navy, uh, which I'd like to comment, is also scouting the possibility of having a, a similar uh, naval base somewhere in Aurora and another one somewhere in Pulillo Island, as confirmed personally by uh, Secretary Lorenzana, which would include an airstrip, and that would include uh, perhaps some uh, Philippine Air Force personnel. So, napakagaganda po nitong mga planong ito na kung talagang hahanapan natin ng pondo, ay talagang dapat po mabigyan hand in hand with the current uh, capital investment plan of the Department of National Defense, Mr. President. So, hindi lang po dalawa, baka apat pa o anim po ito, uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. President. Even as you speak, we're already discussing uh, how much would it take to put up a small detachment. I mean, the facility that would be needed, say, in the island uh, of Batanes province and that one in Tawi-Tawi. So, we will seriously consider and we would like to thank the uh, distinguished uh, gentleman from Cavite for putting forward your uh, thoughts on, on this matter. Uh, yes, Mr. President. At uh, sa palagay ko naman po, eh, hindi talaga magiging malaki ang pangangailangan dito. Ang nakikita ko lamang po, aside from uh, the construction of some housing facilities and perhaps a, 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 the barracks, uh, an armory, ang pinakamalaking capital expenditure po dito ay isang ay yung mga kakailanganin desalination machines dahil uh, wala pong tubig na maiinom yung ating kasundaluhan. La, yun po yung nararanasan nila sa Tawi-Tawi. Having said that, Mr. President, and I think the good chair is uh, one, one with this representation in really augmenting the capability of the armed forces, uh, most especially the, the Philippine Navy, hindi po ako Navy, ako po ay Army. Uh, binabati ko po ang ating uh, chairman sa ma masusing pagbalangkas ng budget para po sa 2020. Other matters perhaps should not be discussed in, in, in the plenary, and I, I probably would refer to uh, possible ISIS incursions uh, in the South, given that... Uh, there are confirmed uh, uh, personalities in the area. But I, again, I'd like to congratulate the defense uh, establishment. The goal really, Mr. President, is to have a credible uh, defense posture, not, not by year 20 to 2030, Mr. President, but within two to three years. Kailangan po talagang lumakas ang ating uh, sandatahang lakas. Kailangan pong uh, igalang ang ating uh, sandatahang lakas at kailangan din sigurong kilalanin ng ibang bansa na meron tayong uh, credible uh, defense uh, posture. With that, Mr. President, I, I end my brief uh, 
interpolation uh, uh, as per request of the majority floor leader and I and I totally support the 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 budget of the Department of National uh, Defense. Thank you Mr. President. Thank you Senator Park even as you were speaking they already have an estimate you know, 20 million for putting up each you know, for putting up the facilities and then uh, to maintain sabi nila, probably mga 50 million a year. So, pinag-aralan na nila and they will try to look for some funds sa ilalim ng kanilang MOE kung po pwedeng uh, isakato para na yung inyong napakagandang mungkahi. At nagpapasalamat sila through me sa inyo sa inyong uh, napakagandang idea. Tama po kayo, hindi na kailangang paghintayin pa yung, uh, yung mga problema ang pwedeng mangyari dyan, maganap. Na baka may incursions na namang mangyari, mawala yung ating mga isla off Batanes and off Tawi-Tawi. So, with that, thank you very much, distinguished uh, uh, gentleman from Cavite. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Thank you very much to our uh, Chair, Senator Lapson. Senator Francis Pangilinan is recognized. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. President. Uh, uh, may we know if the good sponsor is willing to yield to uh, a few questions. Willing me to my, willingly to my batchmate since 2001, batchmate did the Senate. To my mister, true and true. my Senate mister. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Thank you, distinguished sponsor. At the onset, Mr. President, distinguished sponsor, uh, I'm, I, I would like to state uh, for the record that we support the, the budget of the Armed Forces of the Philippines and the Department of National Defense. Uh, we are not objecting uh, to the, its uh, swift passage. Uh, but having said that, we have some uh, questions that we would like uh, to raise so that uh, we can be clarified as to some of the uh, some of the concerns uh, involving the armed forces of the Philippines as well as the Department of National Defense. Uh, Mr. President, uh, distinguished sponsor, during the uh, Finance Committee's subcommittee hearing last September 30, this representation uh, made uh, raised some uh, inquiries regarding the uh, Memorandum of Agreement between the Armed Forces of the Philippines and the Dito Telecommunity uh, Telco Company. Uh, we'd like to thank uh, Senator Lacson as well as uh, Secretary Lorenzana because uh, during that hearing we had requested, I think it was uh, first requested by the minority leader and uh, was reiterated by this representation that uh, we had requested that we be provided a copy of the memorandum of agreement between uh, the AFP and DITO, and uh, we were in fact uh, provided a copy. Yeah, including and like the risk analysis. Yes, together with the risk analysis, which we had likewise requested. Uh, and we had uh, the opportunity to review it, and we had the opportunity to go through the risk uh, analysis, and without uh, divulging uh, confidential information, uh, we'd like to raise some clarificatory questions so that uh, we are all uh, entering into uh, whatever arrangement with our eyes wide open. Uh, distinguished sponsor, um, is the, uh, my first question would be, um, is the AFP and the DND familiar uh, with the intelligence alliance called Five Eyes? Yeah, they're, they're familiar uh, with the uh, Five Eyes, Mr. Uh, President. Ye yes, uh, just uh, for the record, uh, the Five Eyes is an intelligence alliance among the following countries, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, and the United States. Yes, that is correct, Mr. President. Uh, these countries are parties to a, uh, a treaty for joint cooperation in signals intelligence. Uh, intelligence gathering by interception of signals, whether communications between people or from electronic signals, not directly used in communications. Uh, I raise this question because, Mr. President, the US, Australia, and New Zealand have banned the use of uh, chi the Chinese company's Huawei technology in their fifth generation or 5G networks over national security concerns. The uh, Huawei is a multinational corporation uh, based in Shenzhen, uh, 
The United Kingdom, on the other hand, uh, limited Huawei to contribute to non-core 5G infrastructure, such as antennas. Canada, on the other hand, postponed its decision to ban or limit Huawei operations until after its federal elections. Uh, Mr. President, uh, while Huawei is not involved uh, directly in this uh, memorandum of agreement, China Telco uh, is uh, somehow involved uh, because it is the China Telco that is in partnership with Dito. China Telco, unlike Huawei, is a state-owned company. Uh, we are concerned about uh, precisely uh, the involvement of China Telco, although there has been a risk analysis uh, undertaken uh, by the uh, AFP, and we've gone through that. We would just like, uh, for the record, to, uh, uh, to uh, get the sense of the armed forces of the Philippines through the Secretary of National Defense uh, about this concern of these other countries uh, towards Huawei, and if there's any uh, reason to be concerned about China Telco, on the other hand, being involved in building of uh, uh, telecommunication facilities within military camps. Just for the record, Mr. President. I, I'm in conversation with the uh, Secretary of National Defense, and he has not uh, finally decided uh, on the concerns uh, that you uh, that you raised during the uh, subcommittee hearing, and they're awaiting the feedback from you, from Senator Delon, and whoever uh, raised, whoever else, you know, raised uh, those concerns. As regards Huawei, lest we forget, Huawei is in partnership with the two, with the duopoly, Globe correct. and Smart. So don't sila kumukuha ng mga uh, pieces of equipment you know, because they're, they're in partnership. So if we raise the question or if we raise our concern, those uh, mga security concern natin, those, uh, <coughs> those uh, Ms. Latel, uh, in partnership with the, uh, ano, China Tel ba yan? China Telco. China Telco. Uh, well, yes, there could be valid concerns, but uh, they need the input from you. Yes. Uh, yes. Kung uh, meron kayong uh, knowledge about uh, uh, security matters that could compromise, so you may just submit directly to the office of the secretary or to the secretary himself, even after or during this uh, plenary debates, and they will seriously consider and even yes. uh, appreciate uh, having your inputs para yes. so he can uh, decide uh, what to on uh, what to do we'd like to thank uh, the good sponsor and of course the secretary for uh, uh, for uh, uh, this uh, opportunity for us to be able to provide additional inputs and uh, uh, mahalaga po ito dahil uh, we are all concerned obviously about uh, we should all be concerned mr president po possible breach of national security and and the DND should be in the forefront, uh, and, the, and the AFP, in terms of uh, protecting our national security. J just for the record, Mr. President, uh, and I'd like this placed uh, so that our uh, colleagues are also clarified about the matter. Uh, apart from uh, the five eyes, uh, Huawei phones were also banned by networks in the US, including Verizon and AT&T, after being labeled as a security threat. Uh, Langley Intelligence Group Network, or LIGNET, which is a U.S.-based service providing global intelligence and forecasting from former CIA, U.S. intelligence, and national security officers, raised concerns about electronic backdoor in Huawei and ZTE telecoms components. Uh, I understand, yes, that Globe and Smart also have Huawei technology, but these concerns that uh, have been raised by Five Eyes and that I've quoted uh, were fairly recent, uh, just in the last, uh, in fact, within the year, this 2018. One article is dated uh, February 2019, uh, so this was just a few months ago. So it would do well for us to, to be updated and uh, to look into uh, these concerns as uh, moving forward. According to Lignet, if I may quote, uh, these companies, Huawei and ZT, can remotely access communications technologies that could disable a country's telecommunications infrastructure before a military engagement. 
or steal, quote unquote, technology and trade secrets. So uh, if Huawei uh, is viewed as such uh, by uh, Verizon and uh, AT&T and a US-based uh, information intelligence uh, network, uh, this should at least uh, give us some uh, uh, pause in terms of evaluating uh, our uh, security considerations as well as the MOA. I'd like to stress that I'm not objecting to entering, the entering uh, into a MOA. I would just like to make sure and, and that uh, entering into this memorandum of agreement, we do have clear-cut safeguards uh, to be able to protect our, uh, uh, our uh, national interest and national security. Mr. President, uh, distinguished speaker, uh, the sp sponsor rather, uh, another question I'd like to raise is on the matter of the uh, counter espionage law of 2014 of the People's Republic of China. Is the uh, Armed Forces of the Philippines and the Secretary of National Defense familiar with these two laws? Or at least, uh, do they have a sense? Uh, number one is the counter espionage law of 2014, and the other is the Chinese national intelligence law of 2017. Uh, this is about uh, private companies uh, in, in China that are involved in, uh, in uh, spying. No. Yes, that is correct. Uh, that is, uh, if I may place this on record, uh, Mr. President. Uh, the Chinese government under the I think the Chinese government is requiring these private companies to spy for them. Not yes. necessarily spy, but report to them. Yes, the CNIL, or the Chinese National Intelligence Law of 2017, provides, uh, and I quote, it gives authorities sweeping powers to monitor and investigate foreign and domestic individuals and institutions. And, quote unquote, allows Chinese intelligence agencies to search premises seize property and mobilize individuals, mobilize individuals or organizations to carry out espionage. Um, so so uh, we are placing this on record because uh, precisely China Telco is a uh, state-owned company and the law says that uh, authorities can mobilize individuals or organizations to carry out espionage. Uh, that we being the case, therefore, yeah, we, we see your point very clearly, uh, Mr. President. Yes, uh, and that is why there is really a need uh, to ensure that we have the highest uh, safeguards in place or highest uh, measures of security in place with respect to this particular memorandum of agreement. Apart from the uh, CNIL of 2017, is the Counter Espionage Law of 2014 or CEL. Uh, CNL, uh, wait, before that, there is another provision of the CNIL, Article 7, which, quote unquote, requires any organization or citizen to support, assist, and cooperate with state intelligence work. Uh, in addition, Article 14, for the record, of the CNIL authorizes the state intelligence work on organization to, quote, require relevant organs, organizations, and citizens to provide necessary support, assistance, and cooperation. So that is just amplifying, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the concern about a organization like China Telco being mandated by the state, uh, by the authorities to carry out espionage or provide support, assistance, and cooperation. Uh, the other law, Mr. President, and for the record, uh, Article uh, oh, CEL, that is the Counter Espionage Law of 2014. Article 22, for the record, of CEL states when state security organs investigate to learn of espionage conduct or gather relevant evidence, relevant organizations and individuals shall truthfully provide and must not refuse. So this, again, is a concern because uh, if China Telco, a state-owned uh, telecommunications company, is mandated uh, theoretically by the state uh, security organs to investigate, they shall truthfully provide 
uh, information and must not refuse. So this has to be taken also into consideration, uh, Mr. President. Uh, As a matter of fact, they're taking notes, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, uh, I, I'd like to think uh, the, the length and breadth of experience of Secretary Lorenzana and his uh, long stint in, the, in Washington, D.C. would provide him also access to contacts there who would be able to provide more information. Uh, he is more uh, connected there than I am, for certain. And uh, therefore, uh, that would also help us. Again, I do not wish to, ob I'm not placing any objection uh, to the MOA. I am just raising these concerns because I'd like this, the Armed Forces of the Philippines and the Department of National Defense to consider this. Uh, serious concerns as it uh, puts together the agreement. Uh, uh, Mr. President, the other concern that we've raised is, uh, uh, may we have just a minute suspension, Mr. President? Just a minute suspension. Session suspended. Uh, we are ready to resume, Mr. President. Resume, resume. Thank you, Mr. President. Earlier, it was already manifested by uh, the good sponsor that as of today, uh, they have yet to act. The AFP and the Secretary, or actually the Secretary has yet to act on the MOA. So I, I, I take that to mean that uh, this has yet to be approved. That is correct, because they're waiting for your uh, input, Mr. Yes, yes. President. Uh, That's how deferring they are to to your honor, or to the Senate. To the Senate, yeah. yes, uh, and I'm sure, uh, and I'm very thankful for this, and we appreciate this, uh, and uh, we'd like to just uh, ensure uh, that our concerns in terms of national security is addressed. Uh, uh, So, uh, Mr. President, based on the manifestation earlier, uh, we would like to just inquire if, uh, if the MOA has been reviewed by IT experts commissioned by the Armed Forces of the Philippines. Yes, that's confirmed, Mr. President. Uh, I understand that uh, uh, historically, the reason why these, inst these towers were installed uh, in, within military camps was because one, we do need uh, strong telecommunications uh, systems in the country. We do need uh, better services from our telcos, uh, considering ours is the slowest uh, telco uh, bandwidth uh, service uh, in, in the region, one of the slowest. Uh, and they did consider that uh, at one point, these towers by Globe and Smart were being, uh, were being attacked or were being bombed and therefore considering the necessity precisely of uh, telco services, uh, it was, uh, uh, it was uh, the policy then to precisely bring them within military camps to be able to ensure the continuous service of these telcos in these areas. Uh, uh, and therefore that would be the advantage. Uh, um, we noticed that uh, uh, part of the MOA has stressed precisely uh, that uh, the call locator may not use classified information. This is not in the Smart and Globe uh, uh, agreement, and therefore, uh, I guess this is, uh, I would assume that this is uh, a tacit recognition of the need to uh, ensure uh, that our security concerns are, are addressed. Is that not right? Is that not right? Uh, that uh, that particular provision precisely is to address the concerns of uh, po potential breach of security. Yes, uh, Your Honor. Yes. Uh, in the risk analysis, uh, Mr. President, uh, distinguished speaker, uh, was there any uh, uh, simulation of possible uh, uh, Towers being used for espionage. Uh, 
uh, towers being uh, sources of breach of security? So far, none, uh, Mr. President. Uh, for the simple reason, uh, hindi pa naman sila naka uh, install dyan. Wala pa na itatayo. And we're also concerned about personal information of our kababayans. Uh, again, this is a telco. This is uh, information communication technology. Uh, we do hope that uh, before the approval is made that there are serious assessments regarding uh, how to ensure that uh, personal information of, of those using these uh, telcos will be protected and uh, that there will be no breach. For, uh, uh, that will be included in their uh, considerations, Mr. Uh, President. Do we have Chinese reading or Chinese writing or Chinese language proficient military or national defense uh, and security personnel? I, I guess so, Mr. President. And uh, they just confirmed that they have personnel uh, that are uh, fluent and, uh, and competent enough to understand uh, even Chinese character. Meron, meron yes, down. yes, that, that is good because we would like to ensure that uh, we understand completely, uh, you know, the possible... Uh, uh, without relying on interpreters. Without relying on interpreters <laughs> provided by them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that they do not run circles around us. Uh, similarly, do we have IT experts uh, who will uh, also be proficient in the language? Uh, yeah, they have, Mr. Uh, President. Because we have to know uh, the computer language uh, used by uh, foreign nationals uh, so that uh, we can actually monitor whether or not uh, through, the, you know, uh, through the computer language that they utilize or they use that we are completely uh, in understanding of uh, precisely what is going on. So, so so uh, therefore, the answer there is that we are capable of being able to monitor this. That is correct, uh, Your Honor. Um, the MOA uh, states that it shall remain in force subject to termination by either or both parties. Uh, this is different from GLOBE, uh, one year renewable and SMART, five years renewable. Uh, therefore, uh, both SMART and GLOBE have uh, specific periods of validity. Is there a reason why uh, this is open-ended? No, no, Again, no. this is part of our uh, ensuring that uh, at any given point, if we feel that our national security is compromised, that we can terminate uh, the said contract. One reason why uh, there's a discrepancy in the wordings of the MOA and the, the, the uh, the purpose, the intent of the MOA, is because 1991 pa na yung Globe and Smart, and ito, pinag na, and they have taken the necessary uh, precautionary measures in the aspect of security. Kaya nilagyan nila ng clause na either party could terminate. Yes, yes. And that, uh, I think, uh, is the ideal uh, language of the MOA. In other words, this is a better... This uh, is a better a, MOA. A, an improved... Uh, MOA with this particular because provision. Because once they see some uh, infractions, they can unilaterally terminate the agreement. Yes, yes thank you. Thank you uh, for that clarification. Um, I'm not sure if uh, we can answer this uh, in open in uh, publicly or uh, sh that this be uh, in uh, executive session, but... Uh, uh, the AFP Dito Telecommunity MOA requires the host AFP to provide and make available such facilities in accordance with existing security regulations and maintain these facilities in operating conditions during this lease period. Uh, well, just to clarify, in, in other words, we do have existing security regulations that we are to comply with. Uh, and yes, definitely. And it should be consistent with our security regulations. Okay. Maski no pahano namin, meron na yan, uh, Mr. President. Yes. Uh, and these security regulations would be, if breached, would be precisely one of the reasons or basis for uh, uh, a termination. Unilater unilateral termination. Yes, a unilateral ter term termination. 
Uh, the concern perhaps is that if the security regulations have been vetted independently, meaning uh, uh, we have taken... Uh, they continuously improve on the, that, that regulations, that particular document, uh, Mr. President. Yes, I, yes. I, I would assume that because they had to uh, adjust to the, uh, to the times, you know, yung, uh, the demands of the, of the times. Yes, uh, Mr. President, the risk analysis states that the AFP fixed communication system, which links together with the military camps and bases nationwide, is susceptible to electronic eavesdropping and interception. Uh, the risk analysis further mentions that the equipment to intercept signals are readily and cheaply available. In other words, you can really intercept. And to mitigate the risk, the, uh, it says that the AFP will adopt physical access security and network security measures. Uh, in other words, we recognize there is that risk, but we also are putting in place uh, security and network measures to ensure uh, that these risks are mitigated. Uh, is that, is that, that right? That is correct, uh, Your Honor. Uh, would uh, additional uh, technology or equipment be perhaps, you know, uh, uh, moving forward, will it be required? As we know, technology changes very quickly. Kasama po sa kanilang yung sa security ng communication. Yes, part of the MOA also says that uh, that uh, payment of rental uh, may be in uh, by way of uh, uh, equipment uh, provided by uh, Dito. Is or, that right? or services. Or, or services. services. Equipment or services. Yes. I'd like to think that even these uh, equipment, the equipment will <laughs> be subjected to. <laughs> it uh, goes without saying, Mr. President. <laughs> uh, I, I, I raise all these questions, uh, uh, distinguished sponsor, because uh, uh, precisely we would like to move or uh, w enter into any agreement with any country, it's not just China, uh, could be the United States as well. They too uh, uh, have you know espionage technology that we should uh, guard against uh, if we are to promote or uphold our our, our uh, security, uh, our national security concerns. Uh, and having said that, uh, Ms. Mr. President, uh, uh, perhaps we can uh, follow through on this uh, yeah. in terms of uh, we we don't wish to delay. You know? uh, we understand that a third telco is is important, is critical uh, for our uh, for the service of. Uh, for better services uh, of our uh, 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 telco industry, uh, but we are just, uh, we would just like to enter this uh, with our eyes wide open. Uh, and I, and I, I have full trust and confidence in the capacity of our Secretary of National Defense to ensure this. Uh, we have no further questions, uh, Mr. President, uh, and uh, we would like to thank the good sponsor, the Secretary, and uh, uh, the Chief of Staff uh, for their time. Uh, answering uh, some of the difficult and uh, sensitive questions uh, that we have raised uh, regarding this matter. Marami salamat. Uh, Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Recto. Thank you. Senator Ralph Recto. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. This will be very brief. Uh, with the sponsor of the measure or, or the budget of the DND, yield to just a few questions. Thank you to my Lodi in many aspects. Uh, same here. <laughs> same here, Mr. President. In fact, we have the same perfume, Mr. President. <laughs> One of the things I learned from Senator Laxon. But having said that, Mr. President, uh, I'd just like to put in perspective the budget of the DND with regard to our ASEAN neighbors and security as uh, articulated earlier as well by the gentleman from Cavite, Batangas, and then the entire country. Um, Mr. President, isn't it true that one's defense is dependent on the size of the economy and of the population? That is correct. That's why uh, there's a, uh, some kind of a measure, a yardstick. Ang sinusunod po natin 
uh, minimum of 2% of GDP. That is Yun ang ating ibabudget sa defense establishment. Correct. That's correct, uh, Mr. President. <coughs> In fact, yun ang panawagan ni Trump sa NATO ally to spend at least 2% because some of them are spending less than that of GDP. Is mm -hmm. that correct? That is correct. And the U.S. spends roughly 3% of GDP for their armed forces, which is roughly $600 billion. That is so correct. If China Mr. spends President. $170 billion, the U.S. outspends them 3, three to 1. And that's why they have the biggest navy in the world. The man from Washington is in agreement. Yes. And that's why we use the U.S. dollar as well in global trade. Yeah. Okay. Having said that, Mr. President, may I know um, what is the defense spending of the entire ASEAN region, who should be our partners in the region, not only in trade, but also supposedly for defense? What is the... The, the what is the spending? Yeah, the total. It spending. was articulated by uh, the distinguished uh, gentleman from Cavite yes. that we are ranked number five yes. among uh, the ASEAN uh, countries. Yes. yes. And uh, he made a comparison with Singapore, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, Indonesia, yes. Yes. and so forth and so on. And uh, Malaysia is next to us, no, yes. number six. Yeah, the point I was driving at, Mr. President, is that if you add the budget of all the ASEAN departments, ASEAN countries for their defense. Nagbago na pala, Mr. President. Number six na tayo. Yes. Malaysia overtook us. This is as of this 2019, ano? Yes. So, yeah, it, 2019. So, so We're ranked number six. Yes. If we were to add the budget of all the ASEAN countries for their defense, for our defense in the region, and you include Australia, Japan, and Korea, wouldn't that be more or less equivalent to the China spending for defense? Baka hindi pa tayo aabot, Mr. President. Konting diferensya na lang. Possible. Possible. Huh? So your Konting point is uh, let's band together with our ASEAN neighbors, that is including the point, Mr. Japan President. and... Uh, Korea, yeah. the ASEAN, yeah. and uh, Australia. That's a very good uh, uh In fact, I will not stop to that. You know, the problem also, assuming that there was a problem with China, they are also landlocked, isn't that so? That is correct, Mr. President. And they have uh, 21 other countries landlocked with them. And coming, India is one of the biggest Coming from you, hindi na po ako nagtataka. Dahil yung mga ideas nyo talagang... Now, having said that, Mr. President, uh, you mentioned earlier, which is correct, that defense spending should be 2% of GDP. Minimum of 2%. Minimum. And I was surprised to look at the budget of the DND, and it would appear to me that the budget is 4.6% 4 4 4 of the budget, but only 1% of GDP. Because our GDP today is 20 yeah. trillion pesos. Uh, uh, I stand corrected. Yeah. No, I was referring to 4.6% of, of the budget, the budget of the 4.1 trillion budget. Correct, correct, I stand corrected, correct. Mr. President. Of the 4.3 trillion budget, actually. Yes, the that is correct. Program, yes. Okay. Tama po. Now, having said that, um, we're spending roughly, hindi ko na linagay yung pension ng retirees. Kasi hindi current spending yung sa armed forces. Eh. We're spending roughly 190 billion. Nagay na natin ng 200 billion. Di ba? Mga 200 billion. Ang ekonomiya natin, 20 trillion. Ibig sabihin, 1% lang. So we should be spending double that. According to them, it's 1.2 of GDP. 1.2% of 1 GDP. 1.2 if you were to include the pension. So we're still short Pero of the 2%. Pero hindi naman dapat binibilang yung pension eh. Pensionado na yun eh. Kasama pa raw po yung pension, that's 1.2 of GDP. Correct. That's my point. So kung tanggalin mo yung pension, 1% lang. That's actually a, a pittance. Mr. Yes, Mr. That's, that's the point, no? Now, alam ko naman mahal itong AFP modernization. And we have spent roughly, what, 150 billion already? More or less, capital outlay for AFP modernization over the years. Is that correct? More or less, no? So far, magkano yung 150 so, billion? 75? Yes, uh, modernization so far. Mm. Naka, magkano na ba yan? 
131? Yeah, okay. Yeah. And the reason why I asked that number is that uh, I wanted to also make a manifestation here that, um, and to get the thoughts of the Secretary, of that 130 or 150 billion that we spent for AFP. So far, we have spent 197 billion pesos. 200 billion, yes. Yeah. 200 billion. Uh, uh, RA7898, saka yung 10349, yung revised. So I, so I I would assume there would be naval assets, air Army assets. assets, air assets, no? Okay. Um, and having said that, of this 200 billion, meron ba tayong to a certain degree na local content requirement? Yung made in the Philippines. Uh, meron po yung ating uh, government arsenal, maski pa paano. Yes, I'll, I'll get to that later on. Yes. Pero, ito sa capital build-up natin. Well, the problem, is, the problem is, Mr. President, is in the policy, the yeah. national government policy. We took a look at the R&D appropriations. Alam nyo po, number 54 tayo sa global index. No? Ang ating spending sa R&D a pitiful point 39, no, no, 3.9 percent. So, yeah. paano tayo mag advance in this uh, department yeah. kung ang nilalagak ng po, na pondo ng gobyerno yes, for R&D yeah. is only 3.9 percent of the entire uh, budget? Uh, yes, I understand that. No, I'll, I'll give you one example. Uh, and I think we discussed this previously maybe in last year's budget also. Halimbawa, Navy. The Philippines today is the fourth biggest shipbuilder in the world. That is correct. So yung non-technical aspects of shipbuilding, alimbawa yung radar, wala tayo niyan, import natin yan. Pero alimbawa yung naval ship, gumagawa na tayo sa Cebu niyan, yung Tunisi. Uh, 4,000, 5,000 vehicle carrier. And we missed the opportunities sa Subic, yung Hanjin. Hanjin. Oh. We could have taken it, uh, taken yes. it over. Yes. and operate it ourselves That's para correct. sa shipbuilding natin or at least a dry docking man That's lang. correct. So, yun halimbawa, we, sh we should be, we could be building our own Navy, our own Coast Guard, and for example, why not partner with the countries I mentioned earlier, especially the United States and some other European allies with regard to producing Navy ships in the Philippines, using Philippine workers. Or, alimbawa, aren't we purchasing a Black Hawk from Poland? We are purchasing 16 of Black those. Hawks. Yes, Black Hawks. Okay. Made in Poland. Yes, that is correct. American technology made in Poland. <laughs> American we, company based in Poland. Yes. So we have a mutual defense treaty with the U.S., Yes. That is operational. It's still existing. So yes. why can't we make Black Hawks in the Philippines? I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a way of thinking, Mr. Very, President. Very, very good question, Mr. President. Yes. And the point is, as we began discussing that our defense is dependent on the size of your population and the size of your economy, if we could build, have certain local content requirement made in the Philippines, more jobs will be created, then our economy get, becomes just bigger and bigger, and we will have the sustainability for spending more on our military. Diyo ba? And we'll be spending less because we are producing our own equipment. Correct, it will cost us less. No? So more buck for your, uh, more money for your, uh, more, uh, more, uh, more bang for the buck, so to speak. No? Now, there is a, yes, sir. Yes. I, I asked this during the uh, uh, committee deliberation, and I agree with the uh, good uh, Senator Recto that we should have more uh, local content. Uh, the, the committee then took cognizance of uh, existing projects of the OST, the WATA 1 and the WATA 2 launched by the University of the Philippines in 2016 and 2018. These are uh, satellites uh, passing by the Philippines every 24 hours, microsatellites about 50 kilograms in weight with low earth orbit in, in 
at 40, 400 to 420 kilometers from the ground. What I'm saying, uh, Mr. President, is that I agree with the Senator Rector that we should utilize local content. And we have satellites uh, passing by the West Philippine Sea every 24 hours, Mr. President. And this could be utilized by uh, the Department of National Defense without additional cost. It's, uh, it's probably just a matter of tying up uh, with the Department of Science and Technology and perhaps activ activating their own uh, uh, cyber cyber warfare command, uh, if, we have, if we have one. So that is a point I'd like to interject, Mr. President. Thank you. Point well taken. Thank you very much for that uh, intervention. Uh, last two items, uh, uh, Mr. President. We do have a government arsenal. We have. Which you mentioned earlier. Yes, Mr. Uh, President. And what is the mandate of the government arsenal? Basically, their manufacturing are the uh, ammunition requirement of the uh, AFP, the small arms, Mr. President. But isn't that part of this mandate also? Uh, one minute uh, suspension, Mr. President. Session suspended. Uh, ready, Mr. President. Session resumed. Thank you. Isn't it that part of their mandate is to formulate plans and programs to achieve self-sufficiency, self-sufficiency in small arms, mortar, and other weapons and munitions? That's, yes, that's number two on their, uh, on their mandate, list of mandate, Mr. Yes. President. Uh, so, napakalaga na ito. Now, uh, ito simple lang. We were talking about the Navy earlier, Black Hawk. Nung araw, gumagawa na tayo ng mga M16 dito in the 70s, during the time of uh, President Marcos. Elisco. Uh, Elizalde Tool Company. Natatandaan ko yun kasi meron pa rin akong Elisco. Now, having said that, today ba, meron pa, gumagawa pa rin ba tayo yan? Wala na, di ba? Na, wala na yata yun, uh, Mr. President. Wala na. So, uh, then we do have private manufacturers. Arms Corps. Arms Corps. Who produce, whose other military and police units in the region buy from the Philippines. Ang problema yata ng Arms Corps, they cannot compete with foreign uh, suppliers kasi sila may bat, yung foreign supplier walang bat. Correct. Mali kasi yung mga kontrata. Yes. The point is, eto gumagawa ng trabaho dito, pag foreign suppliers sinasabi, wala naman sa batas yun, na sila except yung local yes. kailangan magbayad. Yes, yes, wala right. naman sa batas yun eh. Okay, so, we'll ito nagbabayad ng income, ito nagbabayad ng income tax, yung isa hindi. With your help, Mr. President, yes, let's correct you, that anomaly. Uh, yes, if you anomaly. compute all of that, mas mura yung atin. And I know for a fact that there are many countries in the region, police forces who buy from them. Now, why can't we, and I'm, and I'm not saying let's do it with arms for alone. Incidentally, huh, one of their pistols, Rock Island, it's one of the biggest sellers in the United States. Isn't that correct? One of the biggest. Mura, $400 lang. Pero I think it's number two in the U.S. in terms of sales. Uh, and uh, they're able to win awards. I think there are those in the AFP or the PNP who compete in exercises abroad who use their, uh, what do you call, their, their firearms and they win international competitions. Now, having said that, hindi ho ba dapat magkaroon tayo ng plano? Uh, maybe the government arsenal could be like a special economic zone. That's and 300 hectares, Mr. 300 President. 300 hectares, and pwede natin palakihin pa yun. And that you have foreign suppliers who can locate there, create jobs there. I was informed that there's Local already a bill filed uh, in yes. this regard. Uh, and I just found out from the uh, SND that of the 300 hectares, Na, na doon, yung where the government arsenal is located, only 10 hectares is being utilized. Yes. 
So there's an extra 290 hectares. Yes. Ah. And then we can do this and produce for the region. That is correct, Mr. President. Pwede pa tayo mag-export. So I wanted to manifest that and put that on the record so that in the future, those in the AFP, especially those who are responsible for and accountable for the government arsenal, develop such a plan because it is part of their mandate. It is part of their mandate under the law. Huh? So, and, and uh, so I thank the sponsor for his responses. We should thank you, Mr. President, because uh, these are policy issues that uh, we are not discussing. And since we are, in fact, a policy-making body, we can do something about this. Because yeah. as, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Maybe, 300 hectares yeah. and 290 is yeah. wasteland. Maybe in the next year's budget, meron na kayong presentation dito na Oh, sige. Uh, we need to make the investments in the government arsenal. Ito ang kailangan namin. And I'm sure the Secretary Lorenzana has been also talking to people from Russia who are interested to develop, uh, uh, to put up uh, sites here in the Philippines, right? May ano eh, from what I've read somewhere. That may konting usapan tungkol dyan, no? Okay, now, one final, one final issue. I thank the, uh, my good friend, uh, batchmate as well, uh, Senator Kigo, for discussing the issue of the China Telecom in the AFP. Okay, I had a similar concern now. Uh, a year ago, before this issue even came out, there is a China loan agreement we have with China for safe Philippines. China tell din na naman sa DILG naman. Do you look at it holistically o kanya-kanya lang ngayon? Ha? CCTV yata yun. CCTV. And you Philippines. raised your concern during the uh, budget Tinanggal deliberation last budget. year. Tinanggal ko sa budget. Yes, sir. Yeah. Tinanggal ko sa budget. That's 25 billion, I think. Today, nasa budget ulit. Tinanggal ko sa committee report. It was vetoed by the president, I It think. was vetoed by the president. So, binalik. Hindi naman nagastos. Are you and then today, na naman. Na there's no connivance now with the PNP. There should be. That's why I'm saying, our AFP and PNP should connive. Because there seems to be a connivance from them. They're entering the PNP, they're entering the AFP. Now, having said that, uh, let me also put on record, there have been uh, uh, security concerns raised with regard to China co-owning the Philippine grid. Huh? NGCP. In fact, I heard that the equipment that arrived in Chinese character na and well, they're manned by that is correct. Chinese personnel. That, that is personnel. the point I was going to drive at. Right now, yung yes. buong kuryente ng Pilipinas and the, and the, takbo, yeah. the state grid of China. All the equipment is written in Chinese. Hindi na intindihan ng mga tao natin. They can turn it off remotely. Ang gera naman na darating, ganun na eh. Not necessarily missiles. Cyber war. And what is that? Telecommunications. Hindi ba? Okay. So, nandyan na, nasa NGCP. And then part of the plan of China Telecom is to use the wires of NGCP for their mid-mile telecommunication. It's all over the papers. Why can't our national defense and security officials look at all of this holistically? We're seeing what is happening in the DILG, in the DND, in the NGCP, in the, uh, what do you call this, in the telecommunication sector, uh, not to mention there are bills filed in the Senate amending the Public Service Act to allow foreigners 100% ownership. Hindi lang 40, 100%. So, Hindi ba dapat tinitignan na mabuti yan ang national They're security? doing it already, actually. Well, I was I informed so. that uh, it's being done already uh, to make sure 
na yung mga security concerns that you're raising now yes. are addressed properly. Thank you very much. I will no longer belabor the report. I am not the expert. They are the experts. Uh, so I hope they don't ask me to submit documents to them. <laughs> I can submit to them reading materials. So I don't know what the value of that is. But maybe they should be the, be the ones submitting documents to us of what actions they're taking. And if, assuming they allow China Telecom to be in the AP, why? What clearances do we have? What regulations do we have? How do we compare to other countries in the region or our allies with regard to those regulations? So having said that, I thank the sponsor of this, uh, the budget of the DND, who knows the ins and outs of the DND because marami dyan makakaklase mo naman eh. So thank you very much uh, yeah. for your And thank you for your intervention, thank you. Thank uh, you Mr. President. Thank you. Well, um, this just a manifestation, Mr. Manifestation of Senator yes. Pangilinan before the interpolation of yes, Senator Yes, uh, with the permission of uh, Senator Revilla. Just very quickly, Mr. President, uh, I, I just remembered something when uh, Senator Recto was uh, raising the concern about security and uh, the uh, DILG, China Telco, Huawei uh, arrangement. Mr. President, just for the record, uh, uh, we really have to be concerned about uh, how uh, these uh, companies may have a, a bearing on our national security. Uh, I recall, Mr. President, the, the, the uh, controversies and the uh, unrest in Hong Kong. Uh, when the Cathay Pacific, uh, a, a, it's not even a China company, it's a Hong Kong-based company, uh, when uh, protesters uh, from uh, Cathay Pacific joined I mean, Cathay Pacific employees joined protests. Uh, this reverberated up to Beijing. And uh, the information that we have read in the news was that uh, Beijing asked Cathay Pacific to submit the names of employees who participated in the protests and that, that they were prevented from entering uh, China. You know, 70% of Cathay Pacific's business, precisely, is uh, with the mainland. And therefore, uh, they became uh, vulnerable. Uh, and this is a Hong Kong-based company. We are talking about uh, China Telco, Huawei, which are state-owned or China-based companies. So the question there is, uh, if they do not, or if can they refuse to even uh, reject or uh, refuse to follow uh, certain uh, state policies? And of course, all these in the context of the current uh, nine dash line assertion of China and our own sovereignty and upholding and defending our own sovereignty in the West Philippine Sea. Uh, so these have serious, and I'm sure, military and security considerations that we urge the armed forces and the national defense uh, to take heed and to uh, seriously consider. Thank you. Uh, for the record, Mr. President. Uh, Senator Bong Rebilla. Thank you, Mr. President. I support the uh, budget of the ND and its attached units, but uh, may I propound a few questions regarding the budget of AFP. If the good sponsor, Mike Ababayan, my kapwa kabiteño yield to some questions. Willingly to my kababayan. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mr. Sponsor. I understand, Mr. President, that uh, AFP is able to realize revenues from, uh, from certain operations in the implementation of its statutory and regulatory functions. Is this correct, Mr. President? That is correct, Mr. President. In fact, uh, the use or lease of AFP's equipment, facilities, and real uh, properties is one of the sources of income of AFP. Tama po ba? Tama po yun. Mr. President, uh, for 2017, may we know how much revenues have been realized by AFP? Uh, 
that is correct. Sa BCDA nga, meron nga sila na kukuha rito. Um, in the amount of 13.7 billion. Almost 13.8. For government, 2017 po yan. Government uh, arsenal, nasa mga 79 uh, million. So, ang total, kulat yan, 28 billion. Ang total na revenue generated. Meron po. Baka meron po kayo dyan. I don't, I don't, I don't have. That's why I'm asking Mr. <laughs> Mr. Sponsor. <laughs> Kasi ako po, pag nagtatanong, ako lang po yung sagot. Eh. <laughs> ah, ito na yung total. From 1995. So, from 1995 uh, hanggang 2019, yung galing sa BCD, yung remittance. Of course, sa Bureau of Treasury ito. 32.9 billion from 19 from 1995 noong napasa yung uh, BCDA law hanggang uh, ngayon uh, 2019 2019 ang total niya 32 billion 988 million 47,031 pesos and 81 centavos yun po are these remitted to the general fund or nagagamit po agad ang ito nare ang narelease lang po sa AFP of the 32.9 billion Uh, 19 billion as of 2019. So, meron silang balance na 13.78 billion pesos. So, hindi pa lahat na re-release. From BCDA lang? From BCDA ito? lang yun. Okay. Okay, uh, definitely, Mr. President. Uh, this revenue, through, uh, though meager, will augment the AF AFP's budget for territorial defense and security. May I know kung saan po ginagamit ng AFP so, ang mga po revenues po na ito? Sa AFP modernization po ito ginagamit. Pang uh, ano, equipment. Expert yeah. For equipment. Okay. Recently, uh, news came out about the MOA signed by the AF AFP with Mr. Mr. Tell. Mr. Tell. I was given a copy of the said MOA by the good sponsor. And I heard earlier that the uh, DND Secretary is still reviewing the MOA. Meron lang po kong ilang katanungan dito, Mr. Mr. Sponsor, about the MOA. Under the MOA, Ms. Tatel will co-locate its microwave relay and base transceiver station for mobile communication and tower facilities and its corresponding tower load within AFP camps and facilities nationwide. For the record, how many sites are we talking about? Meron na po bang lista ng mga co-location sites? 94 po out of 25,000. 94. 94 out of 25,000. Uh, kasama po ba itong mga listahan ito sa MOA din po? Naka-spell yes. out naka, po Naka-spell out. More or less, how much will be the rental for one site? Let us say, uh, if it will be located sa Villamore Air Base, Pasay City, Campaginaldo, Quezon City. Uh, prime areas po ito. I am sure mahal ng rental rates po nito. Wala pong uh, pesos and centavos involved. Equipment at saka servisyo lang yung kapalit nito. Uh, Yan din po ang tinanong ko sa kanila noong subcommittee hearing. Ba't hindi kayo maningil ng rental? Eh, pero yun nga, equipment saka services. Pero commensurate na rin siguro doon sa space na na-occupy. So, so wala po tayong equivalent amount wala po. sa mga ano na yan. Masyado sila mabait. Ayan. So about dito po sa MOA, aside from MOA, uh, will, will a contract lease be executed for how long po itong, itong term or lease? Unlike yung sa Globe saka sa Smart na merong... Uh, Uh, definite na uh, period. Ito po, wala eh. Kasi meron silang, meron naka-stipulate dyan na anytime and unilaterally, pwedeng uh, putuli ng uh, AFP. Pwedeng uh, i-terminate na yung uh, agreement. Okay, I understand uh, yung tama po yung binabanggit nyo uh, sa Globe at sa Smart uh, Telecom. Uh, kailan po ba yung MOA ng AFP with Globe? Mga 1991 para o yan, simula, Mr. President. As of uh, October uh, 2019, how much revenues have been realized from this? Meron ba yan? Sa globe po. Yung globe? Pareho rin. 
same thing with smart. Yeah, services uh, and equipment din eh. Ah, so thing. walang walang value din po. Walang cash uh, involved. The reason why I'm asking this uh, Mr. Sponsor, uh, siguro po dapat mas tingnan po natin dahil yung mga location po na pinaglalagyan yeah. nila, talaga mga mga prime properties, no? At uh, malaki siguro ang po pwede pang kitain ng ating gobyerno dito. In fact, I still have so many questions. But, Ako po, uh, I'm in agreement with you kasi yan din ang tinanong ko sa kala nung subcommittee hearing, bakit walang rental fee? Mm -hmm. E gumagamit sila ng space. Right. Uh, kaya yun lang po ang uh, siguro dapat uh, tingnan po natin para mas yeah. malaki pa natin yung income. Ng, yeah. Maraming salamat po. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sponsor. Uh, the minority leader, Sir Torilo. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, will the gentleman sponsor yield the floor just to a few questions? Uh, willingly, uh, as always, Mr. President, to the uh, distinguished minority leader. Uh, Mr. President, uh, there are just two issues that I want to bring up. The matter of the uh, uh, rising pension cost for the MUP and the matter of the modernization. All right. Uh, I am looking at these technical notes on the 2020 proposed national budget prepared by the Department of Budget and Management. On page eight of this report, it points out fiscal risks, open quote, fiscal risks, and other sources of risks to growth. Um, and let me read it, uh, uh, what, what the DBM said, as one of the fiscal risks. Rising pension costs for military and uniform personnel. The rapidly rising cost of pension payments and retirement benefits for military and uniform personnel, or MUP, poses a threat to the national government fiscal position in the medium to long term." End of quote. And as part of the presentation of DBM, uh, which they uh, designate as uh, figure one in the report uh, on page uh, eight, it indicates the total pension requirement for MUP at 186.5 billion, out of which 114.7 billion, or 61.5 percent, is the MUP pension requirement, and 71.8% or about 38.5% or 71.8 billion or, or, or um, uh, 38.5% would be for uh, uh, salary for PS. First question, that's the gentle, the uh, Mr. Sponsor, does the AFP confirm this? Because this is a DBM uh, um, presentation. The data that they, have, that they have is only for the AFP pension, uh, pension yes, Mr. Yes. President. Uh, let, let, okay, let's limit to that, AFP pension. How does it look? How much is the PS? How much is the pension? Um, yearly PS. In, 20, in 2017, the appropriations for uh, personal services, 70 billion, or 70.9 billion, uh, for, uh, while the AFP pension is at 34 billion, 33 million. For 20, 2019, uh, yung PS, umakit sa 114 billion, while yung AFP pension, umakit din siya sa 57 billion. Now, How for much? 2020, 57.9, 57 billion, 935 million, 983,000 okay. pesos, yun ang AFP pension okay. for 2019. Okay. 
uh, compared to the PS of 114 billion, 307 million, 685,000 pesos. Now, under the proposed uh, 2020 budget, uh, PS appropriation is uh, 117 billion, 206 million, 93,000 pesos compared to the AFP pension of 58 billion, 846 million, 62,830 pesos. Yun po yung picture as yes. far as the AFP. So, the way it sounds, Mr. President, I may be wrong, but it would appear that there is a wide discrepancy between the report of the DBM and uh, what uh, the j good gentleman has Yung mentioned. Yung sa DBM po, ano yun? MUP, military MUP, and uniform I understand, personnel. I understand. But even assuming uh, that uh, this involves everybody and when uniform personnel, uh, medyo, medyo malayo po ang figures. No? Um, th that's why I was going to ask. Is, is uh, uh, the uh, uh, entry in the budget of 117, let's say for 2020, of 117.2 billion, is just the salary of those in the active service? Or is this the total PS for the AFP of which 58 billion is, uh, is, uh, is, is, is retirement? Yeah. Military and civilian personnel, ng buong uh, AFP. Is 117. 117 uh, billion 117 for 2020. Billion for 2020. Uh, and uh, bukod doon is a retirement uh, appropriation of 58 billion. That is correct, uh, Mr. President. Uh, uh, yes, as I was, uh, as, as uh, uh, I read out the report of the DBM, which appears to to in, inconsistent, indicate, yeah, uh, in, inconsistent, because if 117 to 58 is just 50 percent or so, whereas here, uh, even including the PNP, it would appear that already that 61.5 percent of the total PS is with uh, is on pension. So. I, uh, you know, just looking at it without yeah. the detailed examination, it would appear that these figures that you mentioned, Mr. Mr. Sponsor, yeah, and correct. the report of the DBM does not jibe. Although we're not comparing apples to apples. I, I, but, I know. Uh, I, yeah, I, I see your point, Mr. President, that it is inconsistent yes. with the ratio. That's correct. Because uh, the whole MUP, as you have uh, pointed out, uh, 71.8 billion yung uh, PS, mm. 114 billion yung, na yung uh, pension. Yes, yung pension. While sa AFP, mukhang uh, pabaligtad yung, uh, <laughs> yung equation, yung ratio. That's correct. Del 117 compared to 58 uh, billion. It's probably because there are more uh, uh, police retirees, and that would include BJMP, Bureau of Fire, even Coast Guard. Well, Ang AFP is uh, entirely yung different because AFP lang yung uh, pinag-uusapan dito. But yeah, yeah, uh, I, know, I agree uh, with you that yeah. there's a big uh, uh, discrepancy in the ratio. Mm. And we have to sort this out, Mr. Yes. President. Yes, we have to sort this out because this is, as, uh, this is a fiscal risk as pointed out by the... Uh, by, by the uh, Department of Budget and Management. Because in your presentation, sir, it would appear that uh, the, 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 the crossing, yes. uh, the, uh, the crossing between the, uh, between the pension and the uh, uh, regular the entire, pay. The entire MUP. The entire MUP is, is, uh, simply requires an explanation. They will not intersect. They will not intersect yes. yet. So anyway, uh, maybe, uh, I don't, well, DBM is no longer around, but maybe uh, the Department of Finance people who will be back this afternoon can be asked or to, to, to clarify this. But having said that, uh, Mr. President, during the hearing, the committee hearing of the budget of the uh, DND, Secretary Lorenzana committed that they are going to submit a proposed bill or plan or roadmap to put up a self-sufficient, uh, self-sustaining pension fund. 
Uh, may we know, may we have an update on this, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Mr. Sponsor? Uh, they're still finalizing it, and they will sub submit to us as soon as they have finalized uh, their pension plan because it entails also the uh, participation or the input coming from the DOF because, as we have discussed earlier, there are you know, a lot of uh, alternatives or options uh, like sale of uh, assets to form the seed money for the pension plan. Mm. In fact, uh, uh, if you recall, uh, uh, Mr. Sponsor, yesterday I, I pointed out the uh, substantial recovery if we privatize the gaming industry. <laughs> and That's maybe great. we can use that also to fund past service liabilities of uh, our soldiers. There's nothing wrong with that. It, yeah. is a, it is a policy issue as to whether we should continue to operate uh, uh, casinos. And uh, in, in our view, we should not. And we can use uh, the privatization of the gaming industry to fund uh, the past service liabilities in the AFP. But and as anyway, you pointed out, it doesn't take legislation to accomplish that. Yes. Because it's already incorporated in the uh, GCG law that you passed. That's correct, sir. Na it only takes an EO from yes. the executive department to accomplish that. Uh, that that's correct, sir. So it's a, a, a doable uh, activity. Now, <clears throat> which brings me to another point. The AFP modernization program. Modernization. Of, uh, again, from this report, uh, the uh, AFP modernization program is continuously funded under Republic Act 10349, Four nine. Which, yes. I, uh, which is the uh, basis conversion. Uh, Revised uh, AFP modernization AFP. act. Yes. Now, the, as, uh, the, the law extends the modernization program for another 15 years uh, in order that uh, the enhancing, uh, we, we can continue enhancing the capabilities of the AFP. Uh, did I hear, can, 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 can the gentleman uh, honor or accommodate me by repeating what was uh, mentioned earlier as to the amount of money that's already been allocated for the uh, modernization plan? Under the revised uh, AFP modernization program, yung 10349, ang narilis na po, 133 billion, 862 million, 417,909 pesos. Yung, Pwede ba round off mo na lang yun? Ang haba-haba. Oh, 133, oh, 134 billion. 134 okay. billion, okay. Uh, uh, Doon sa 7898, yung original na AFP modernization program, 63.3, or sabihin natin 63.4 kasi mm. 63.38. Mm. So, ang total, 197.2 billion pesos. Since what year, sir? Uh, yung since 7898, 1995. Nine. Uh, 2000, no, 2002. 2002 yung funding nagsimula. Sorry, sorry? 2002. Maximal in funding. 2002. And the 134 billion from what for what period? Uh, simula ng 2014. Mm -hmm. Yung revised. Passed in 2014. 2014. Yung revised. Yung revised. Yung original, yung AAP Modern Extension Program or Act, yung 7898, 2002. Because so. let me read to you the statement of the DBM in this booklet. It says, for, two, twi for 2020, some uh, 25 billion pesos is allotted to the program, yeah, bringing the total appropriated budget since 2014 to 154.7 billion. Tama uh, ito? That is correct, uh, Mr. President. So this is a right, a correct figure since uh, that, uh, since 2014 to date, uh, 154.7 billion. Un unreleased. Ang fund releases, Mr. President, uh, since 2002, a total of 188 billion, 80 million, or 188 billion. 
-hmm. Yun ang uh, since 2002 under the uh, General Appropriations Act. <laughs> ang unreleased, naiwan pa mga 28.5 or 28.6 billion pesos. Sa dami pong figure na nasasabi dito eh. I am reminded of the saying, confuse the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we are enemies, but talagang mahirap po intindihin. That is not the intention, Mr. <laughs> President. <laughs> I hope that's not the intention. In any case, uh, having said that, uh, Mr. President, uh, I do recall that several years back, um, there was talk of uh, uh, transferring the AFP uh, Camp Aguinaldo, uh, is it? Camp Aguinaldo. Camp Aguinaldo from its present site to somewhere else and use the present site to generate funds for the AFP, to, particularly on the modernization. To port my say say, I, uh, uh, I don't recall yeah. anymore. But uh, can we spread on the record what was the original plan and what happened to the original plan? Is it going to be pursued? That was the plan only to find out that Camp Aguinaldo, once it is vacated as a military uh, uh, facility, would revert back to the Ortigas uh, family. Mm. So, in abandon yung plan. But well, I was okay, told just, just stop there, sir, yes. if I may. You know, that was a similar setup with the provincial capital of Rizal. It was, if, if you know, if you, the present provincial capital, former Impasig. provincial Impasig. capital grounds of Rizal, is now a mall. Uh, owned and operated by the Ortigas. Uh, I think, I don't know what it's called now. Uh, anyway, the provincial capital of Rizal, as you we know now, transferred to Antipolo. Okay. Yes, that is correct. Now, it was, so, but Ortigas did not get their land free. Ortigas had to fund the transfer, including the, the, uh, uh, Real estate. The building in Antipolo and uh, some sums of money in addition. What I am pointing out, uh, Mr. President, is the fact that there is that reversion provision in the deed of the nation is not a hindrance to. I can read your mind, Mr. Uh, President. I can read your mind. Yeah, to being able to generate funds out of a location which is not really critical to the AFP. In other words, they can go to, well, not for anything, but uh, if we uh, see uh, that is an opportunity for us to gather, to have uh, a fund for the modernization. Um, begging the indulgence of the gentleman on the floor, uh, I just received a request from the uh, members of the Commission on Appointments who are on the other side of the hall. If they can borrow the two generals, if they are, they're not uh, answering your questions. I have no problems with that, uh, Mr. President. I believe so can we send uh, uh, Senator Larson to dismiss the two generals to attend the their CA no. uh, hearings? Uh, they, they just go and leave like the President uh, taking vacation <laughs> leave. <laughs> <laughs> now, if they're not answering your questions, if it's the Secretary De Lorenzano, yeah. Yes, uh, General Clement and uh, General Cousy may be excused, yes. Mr. Yes. President. All right, but they have so to come back here after their confirmation. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, okay, no. yeah, you can attend the, me the meeting. Well, congratulations uh, in advance, Mag General, Section 20 sana for your confirmation. Ko, so. <laughs> the congressmen are waiting on the other side of the hall. So you can start with their hearings. Uh, and it's not, it's not prevented. Uh, they are borrowing also Senator Tolentino. <laughs> to attend. <laughs> anyway, he's done with, with this no, interpolation. So, okay, so we may continue, please. Going back to my proposition, the <laughs> fact that there is a condition uh, in the deed of the nation, which is the reversion to the Ortigas family, should not be a hindrance because the AFP can stay there forever and the Ortigas family will not be able to do anything. That is a very valuable property which the Ortigas would be willing to pay in the form of whatever amount and, uh, that they will donate to the government for the AFP to free that space and use the funds now that we generate out of this for the AFP modernization. Yes, that is uh, correct, Mr. President. V very good suggestion. Uh, but for your point of information, 
only 25 hectares out of the 177 hectares uh, yun ang title sa Ortigas. W what about the rest? Uh, where the is rest, the rest? Uh, parang lateral family or meron pang ibang kakausapin. Yung exactong lugar where the general headquarters building is located, yun ang Ortigas. Okay. That's 25 hectares. Okay. But the total uh, land area is 177. Yes. But uh, having said that, pareho rin naman yung formula that you're suggesting. Yes. The, I, I would like to believe that the other owner or owners of the entire uh, complex would be very willing because 177 hectares in that area would, you know, cost, hindi na natin mabilang. Mr. Hindi na, that's correct. And hindi na rin natin mabilang kung magkano ang, uh, uh, ang, 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 ang funds na mag-generate natin. If we are just serious, about uh, the pension plan uh, about that plan about the AFP modernization plan I do not see any disadvantage to the AFP if they transfer to another location or is there one that I do not see where among the they will study the matter and uh, make the proper proposal ang uh, gusto lang tumabi sa atin sa BGC <laughs> mas mapamahal pa Mas po mahal pa po yan. Ay, mas, uh, levity aside, I think this is a serious matter which uh, we can resort to to help the AFP generate the much needed funds for its modernization instead of year in and year out yes. coming before Congress begging for funds to modernize our uh, armed forces. Here is an asset, dead asset if I may assert, which can be used with serious study uh, to, to generate funds for the AFP. Para po hindi na tayo maghanap dito at, uh, araw, uh, year in and year out. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the AFP would come to us and ask for uh, funds. The, and I, 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 you know, I don't even know how much it generates, but it's, it's maybe it's mind boggling Trill that we could not even. Trillions. Uh, yeah. billions, billions of pesos. I would assume. So, uh, may I ask, uh, first, may I ask uh, through the uh, good sponsor, the AFP to activate the, or to form a task force to study this proposition? In fact, uh, right after this budget hearing, Mr. President, they will start posting their pencils yes. and uh, study and make the proper recommendation. Yes. They're more than willing, and thank you for the uh, idea, for the suggestion, because they're, they'll be more than willing to adopt the suggestion made by the distinguished gentleman. Yeah, Your Honours, yes. uh, <clears throat> you might as well um, make a complete a study in the contention of the Quezon City government about this, <laughs> because I distinctly remember in uh, 1989, when I was vice mayor of Quezon City, my mayor then, June Simon, wanted to remove uh, the Camp Aguinaldo because of the coup d'etat of uh, Gringo and uh, <laughs> company. So we wanted them out of Quezon City. But then uh, they said that it will revert back to the Ortigas. So we abandoned the idea. So just to make sure that you contend with the Quezon City government also, no? Yeah. And not only the national government uh, as, yes. as far as that, that study is concerned. So may, okay. You know, I have been in the bureaucracy for quite a while. And unless you impose deadlines, uh, ta -taon po, puro understudy. I hope it is not too much to ask, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Sponsor, if we can ask the DND to give us a timeline uh, for both the first request that I made, which is the matter of uh, the roadmap for the self-sustaining pension fund and uh, a possible source of revenue for uh, the uh, AFP modernization program. Because here, again, just on a smaller scale, uh, let me uh, relate to you, Mr. Mr. Sponsor. Years ago, in Iloilo, we transferred the airport from where it was mm -hmm. to move it to where it is today. And it freed 52 hectares of land right in the city. We sold that land to Mega World, I mean through bidding, and the amount generated was 
just about enough if you put on net present value the loan that we secured from Japan to put up the airport and the terminal of about, I think, uh, uh, six billion pesos. So it is a, a, it is a, a, a uh, process yeah. where you use the asset to generate funds for a valid purpose. So I, I'm, I strongly feel that this is an asset. This is something that we can help AFP modernize. And there is an asset there that is available. It's a question of uh, pushing pencils, uh, devoting time, coming up with a plan. And there are experts all over the bureaucracy, uh, particularly in the asset privatization uh, trust, if it's still existing, in the Department of Finance. Uh, they have an asset privatization unit there, which are experts in the privatization of government assets. And here, this is a, a perfect opportunity. And so we do hope that uh, we do not have to wait until the next budget round uh, in order that we can have some, uh, we can move forward on this. Uh, this is something that I would strongly submit uh, can benefit the armed forces of the Philippines. Thank you. As a matter of fact, uh, Mr. President, except for uh, Under Secretary Carolina, most if not all of these guys are my underclassmen, so I'm ordering them to <laughs> comply with your <laughs> requirement. Well, uh, once they go back to camp, they should uh, start uh, posing pencils and uh, uh, provide a timeline. Because you know? once you create a task force, I remember President Ramos at the time, mm. if you Complete. don't want to finish the work, you create a task force. Yes. But uh, in this uh, particular uh, situation, they will create a task force to finish the job. Yeah. Well, in and, fact, uh, uh, when, you, can, when can you submit to us to Congress? Just a rough outline. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Rough, rough the timeline. When can you finish the study and the proper recommendation? Within this month. November na tayo, ha? Kaya nyo, ha? <laughs> November 30, they will submit to us their, a copy of their, uh, of their study plan. proposal. Because plan. as uh, you mentioned, uh, President Ramos, his favorite uh, marginal note is in the memo you give to him. CSW. Is CSW. Complete staff work. Complete staff work. So, yeah, they will do that. They will yes. do that, Mr. President. So thank you, uh, Mr. President, and uh, we do hope to receive this uh, action plan on the two uh, documents that we're asking for, which will help AFP tremendously. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. I received a note here, Mr. President. Uh, Senator Gordon would like to interpolate. He is requesting to suspend and ask his questions after the CA meeting. I was also instructed <laughs> by his staff. I was about to mention Please, that. Uh, Mr. President, that uh, Senator Lakson has a very sad face when he... <laughs> <laughs> worried, worried face. Uh, worried face. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to make an appeal to the sponsor because you know Senator Gordon feels very strongly about defense, okay. uh, internal and external defense issues. Uh, and yes, uh, they've made... Uh, consistent follow-up with me if it's possible that so, we could suspend. What we could do, Mr. Chair, Mr. Uh, President, we have uh, Senator Marcos would also like to manifest, but she's right in the, the CA hearing now. Um, she just wants to manifest and then we can have Senator Gordon. So we can suspend now, have the CA and they will become, they'll immediately- Right after the CA meeting because will, we want, yes, Mr. we don't President. want to delay also the uh, deliberation of the budgets of DA, Absolutely, uh, DPWH, and there are other agencies. So, so we, what we'll do is right after the CA hearing, we will uh, uh, resume consideration of the bar Department of But it's of almost 12 Defense. noon. So we'll have yes, to sir. suspend and uh, come back yes, at 2, 2 p.m. That is correct, Mr. President. And uh, what will happen is we'll give it some time. We'll ah. ask the staff and Senator Gordon that we will wait for him at 2 p.m. If they are not here by that time, we have to move on. Anyway, Mr. So President, uh, yes. the chairman of the Commission on Appointments is also needed for the plenary yes, uh, uh, deliberation yes, or confirmation. That's All right. right. The majority leader. So, Mr. And, President. Uh, yeah. Your honors. He, um, we will be, all right, we will be suspending, as you proposed. Yes, Mr. President. Uh, and then uh, resume, at, uh, resume the Department of the National Defense Budget after the, uh, at, at 2 o'clock. Yes, but may we, I, may we perhaps remind our colleagues 
Ang usapan natin, yes, pag wala Mr. ka dito, tapos na yung departamento, wala na. So perhaps this is the only lenient day that we can do, we can do. Yes, just Mr. because President. andyan pa yung defense, hindi pa tapos, mag pwede mag-resume ng 2 o'clock. Yes, But perhaps Mr. after this, uh, let us strictly follow our, uh, our uh, agreement. Yes, Mr. President, so that, I agree. Uh, yeah, uh, please I agree. remind our colleagues. So tama yung sabi nyo, those who would want to, do the, to interpolate the budget of the Department of National Defense should be here at 2 o'clock. If yes, they are Mr. not President. here at 2 o'clock and we're finished with that, we finish the budget yes, with Mr. Deem submitted. Because, Mr. President, I'd like to remind our colleagues um, that we must follow schedules. Yes. We are also here, you and I, Mr. President, together with Senator Laxon, Senator Gerlon, we are here doing 12-hour shifts. And we're also busy. We also want to attend meetings outside, but we can't. We're doing our job here. So if they want to interpolate, with all due respect to our colleagues, pasok po sila. They mm. should come. Yes. It's not should not be our fault, uh, Mr. President, if they are not around. Yan ang apela po natin sa mga kasamahan natin. I hope they can, the staff that are listening here now, please take note of that. Please tell your, your um, principals mm. that uh, we have a standing... Uh, not order, but we have a standing request an for an agreement, uh, yes. a gentleman's agreement last week that those who are present may be able to ask questions, those who are absent, sorry na lang po. Because uh, lahat po tayo napapagod. Sorry na lang when we are done with the budget, budget of the and deemed submitted and approved. Department. Yes. That's correct, Mr. President. All right. Unless it's an emergency. Yes. Unless uh, it's an emergency po, uh, <coughs> then we can make, uh, of course, right. we can always... Uh, uh, listen to the wishes of the body and uh, all right thank you sir thank you sir so so with that we move to suspend the budget of the dnd um, end the session end the session till 2 p.m for a lunch uh, commission appointment sitting and lunch break all right any objection eating none session is suspended until two o'clock this afternoon thank you Mr. <laughs>